Welcome to the HR Stories Podcast, listener question edition, where there is a lesson in every story. Each week, the team at HR Stories Podcast shares questions from our podcast audience and provides tangible, practical advice that everyone can use to get HR right. Our hosts today are management and HR consultants, Chuck Simikian and John Tallheimer. What is on your mind today? Welcome back to the HR Stories Podcast, where there is a lesson in every story. This is our question and answer edition. My name is John Tallheimer, and I am here with Mr. Chuck Simikian, HR in paradise. How is the keys? The Florida Keys, um, they're great right now, but we just had our hurricane, first hurricane prep meeting of the season. Who's responsible for what? What's HR responsible for? And, uh, you know, overall, HR is responsible for communication, making sure the employees know when to come in to work after the hurricane, during the hurricane, before the hurricane, not during the hurricane, but, uh, you know, uh, so it was it's fascinating. The prep that's going to go into hurricane um, uh, awareness here in the Florida Keys. But right now, that's great. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's great. You know, I did, Chuck. I was business continuity manager at a large broadcasting network. And um, and so experienced lots of things, including a hurricane. And we were in central Pennsylvania, not central. We were on east Pennsylvania, east Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania. And um, and we had to deal one. Um, It wasn't terrible. Like it wasn't. We didn't get hit that way. We had some strong winds and that kind of stuff. And we had to make sure people delayed coming into work and things like that. But um, yeah, I can imagine down in the Keys, it's probably a lot of work operationally, a lot of work, human resources as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, um, but everything is going, going fine. And we've got a couple of good questions here. I pulled these off of our team of one HR community on Facebook. Folks, if you're not a member of that, we've got over 3,500, 3,600 members. It's a very active community. Some people have said it is the best HR community on Facebook. It is free to join, and uh, we would love to have you uh, be a part of it. Absolutely, yeah. Join us. Uh, It's great, and you get a lot of help. Not only do Chuck and I comment as much as possible, but we get a lot of help from some really smart HR people out there. Um, and I love people sharing their wisdom and help and support. And so, um, yeah, definitely check out the team at HR One community uh, and join us on the Facebook group for sure. What are the questions, well, Chuck? I would love to hear. Well, so the, the first question, yeah. And and um, I, I didn't capture the full essence of this, but it had to do with uh, or the, can I hold an employer responsible for behavior that they participate in or they demonstrate outside of work, off the clock, on their own time? So, for example, the person posted, they were anonymous, so I, um, you know, so we don't know uh, who or what, but uh, the person was or where they were from, but they said they had an employee that was riding the bus to work. And uh, it was in the morning, and if I recall the situation, the employee got into an argument with profanity uh, with another passenger. And uh, then when the bus stops, the passenger then sees uh, that employee, that person, that they got in an argument, come into our business, our, and, re- and they, they realize, oh my gosh, that person that was so rude to me that yelled at me, use all the profane, they work for that company. So they complain to the company. And so now uh, if this is my employee that got the complaint by uh, someone right on the bus, you know, can I tell them, you know, hey, you're not representing us and therefore we are writing you up, therefore we are firing you. Uh, I mean, basically, can we discipline them for conduct that is not related to us if we think it makes the company look bad. So that's the question. Yeah, so a lot of things to kind of unpack here, right? And so let me tell you a story. Back in the day, right, before social media, 
Um, we were always told if we were wearing the company uniform, ah. you better act on, on, on the best behalf, right? So if you're out there, you're acting on the behalf of the company, you're out doing conventions, you're whatever you're doing, you have the company uniform on, you better act under the code of conduct the company presents, right? So you need to do that. Um, and if not, we would discipline them. We would discipline them and take them out. I think it's a little different. Your bus example is a little different, right? Because this happens off work. Um, they weren't representing the company. I, I would tell the employee and I would do an investigation for sure. Because again, do not jump to the conclusion that it actually happened. Do not mm -hmm. jump to the conclusion that your employee was in the wrong. Um, and I would have, in this case, I would have a conversation with them and say, we're going to do an investigation. We got this complaint. We want to find out what happened. Uh, we want to talk to you. We want to talk to this other person, kind of dig a little deeper, kind of figure out what, what happened. Um, but probably I'm not going to fire that person, but I'm going to have a conversation. Now, I would also say, Chuck, what... What other performance or other document, dis, documentation or discipline do I have on that employee? If this is a trend that he yells and curses at people, then then I'm firing the person probably. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the poster, there was a lot of discussion on this one. And someone said, well, you employ at will. You can do whatever you want. I, I guess it would be like if I was driving to work and I gave someone, let's say, the middle finger then pulled in the employee parking lot. Oh my gosh, you know, uh, they're not representing us. And I, I, you know, here's the deal, John. If the situation with someone else outside of work um, got into some sort of discriminatory practices or um, they were, um, you know, based on race, religion, sex, things like that, um, I might have a concern about that, you know, um, if they are wearing the company uniform or a company shirt, and uh, I would have maybe a concern about that. We did the same thing at, at Disney. We allowed employees to wear their uniforms home. We told them you got to take your name tag off and you can't go into a bar, right? So, um, you know, so there were those, you know, little guidelines there. But I would say overall, could you discipline them? Yes. Would you want to? I don't know. Once again, what's that word of HR? Maybe it depends, right? Um, yes, yeah. no. It, 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 you'd have to really look at the totality of the circumstances and also decide whether or not their conduct went into illegal or maybe even acted in a discriminatory way so yeah i think that's the bar right or were they illegal were they discriminating were they harassing were they breaking a law then that that's a different story uh, the one thing i do want to point out chuck because it's in the first sentence of this question uh, can i hold an employee responsible for behavior that they participated or demonstrated and so what if they're demonstrating right what if they're out uh, at a demonstration, whatever the demonstration is, they're at a demonstration. Boy, you really want to be careful with that, right? Because if it's a legal demonstration, and they're not doing, like, they're not doing anything illegal. I would not get involved in that conversation, yeah. right? Somebody sees them there and they're demonstrating legally for something that maybe you disagree with. I would be very careful about holding them accountable for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Good discussion. Yeah. Listeners, we would love to hear if you follow our links in the show notes below. Love to hear what you think about this one uh, or jump yeah. on our uh, team at HR uh, stories uh, or the uh, HR team of one Facebook page and uh, chime in. Let's see where you land on this. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I love that. All right. Story two. This is fr from a... Um, from one of our, our listeners and followers on the uh, Facebook page. Hello, I just had the term an employee who has been given every opportunity to improve. While they had a great attitude and they're a great member of the team, otherwise 
They just refuse to meet us halfway. It's so frustrating. Even though I know we did more than enough to prevent this, and it's on the employee for their lack of improvement, I just feel totally defeated. Does it ever get easier? And this is from an HR person, by the way. So does it ever get easier? I still have to stifle the quivering in my voice from sheer anxiety. And so they weren't really a, asking a, an answer to a problem overall, but they were throwing out, does it ever get easier? And I think, I guess what they mean is, does it ever get easier when you terminate an employee? And I specifically answered this. I, I think I said, uh, it doesn't, but it does, you know? Um, you know, you you cannot take on uh, the burdens and the accountability for someone that should be able to, if you've done everything possible for them, at some point, you just have to let them go. And you may be doing them a favor by letting them go, but does it get easier? You know, I see termination as the capital punishment of the employment process. And um, it does get easy, but you have to disassociate yourself uh, emotionally. That's my opinion. Dissociate, you know, still maintain respect, still maintain empathy, still maintain professionalism, but you cannot get so emotionally involved with the person thinking about how they're feeling and, you know, how, what, they, what are they going to do now when you gave them every opportunity to improve? What do you think? Yeah, I love that. And, you know, because so funny. So I'm thinking about, I did, was doing this coaching session with a group of managers. This subject came up about termination. And so we were talking like, do, what do you think about termination? How do you feel about it? And that kind of stuff. And most people are like, oh, we don't like to do it. We don't like to do it. And somebody was brave enough to go, I, I don't have a problem with it. If they're not performing, I'm giving them every opportunity. And they're not performing and I am going to promote them to a customer, which I think was hilarious. <laughs> um, and right. And so I think we have to, if you have done everything you can to help that person be successful and they have still made the choice not to be successful, right? It's their choice. They still not mm -hmm. made the choice to be successful. You shouldn't be upset about it. You have done everything you can to help them. And they have chosen to be terminated. Now, yeah. there are times where somebody, let me give me an example. There's times when people break a policy and it's sad to see them go, but you have to uphold the policy. But now let me give you an example. So I was talking to somebody in one of my classes in one of my workshops, and we were talking about how important it is to make sure that you're enforcing your policies across the board. And they decided to put in a policy about um, company theft from company pro or theft of company property. So, and they put in like, if it's more than $15, you will be terminated right away. They had an employee that was an excellent, everyone liked the person, everyone, thought this person was a you know high performer. They were gonna go places in the company and that kind of stuff. Well, they stole $25 mm. worth of something. I forgot what it was. And they had to go through the policy and terminate this employee. And yeah. she said, as we did it, every single person was crying. Yeah. Because again, but it was the right thing to do, right? It's the right thing to do when you have that policy and you do it, right? To me, I don't know if I've ever put a dollar amount in a, in a policy around theft from company property, but you do have to follow through because if you don't, then you're not being accountable and you're being inconsistent with your policies. And if you do it for somebody and it could be a discrimination claim. Yeah. So to recap, as someone that has done it many times and facilities, does it ever get easier? Yes. Is it ever easy? No. So there we go. Not only, you know, so um, thanks yeah. and thank you for that example. John, you got a question. 
for me. I do. I, I love. I love your. I love it. I just want to go back to that question. I love that you said yes, it does, and no, it doesn't. <laughs> so I think that's um, good. So I was doing a workshop this week with people that are new to HR, and mm -hmm. so one of the persons asked this, and so there was a holiday that was coming up, and a couple employees reached out saying they have meetings scheduled for the holiday and want to use their PTO, right? And so it's a company holiday. They all get a day of holiday. Um, can, use the, can they use their PTO at another time? Is that uh, legal? We have, we have the holiday schedule posted all year. So they know that this day is coming up, but they scheduled meetings on this day can they use that PTO? Can they change that PTO to another day? So what do you think? Um, well, it, you know, it all depends what the the company, you could, legally you could do whatever you want, unless there's some sort of state or local law, right? Um, right. But uh, they're, they're usually most company policies cover that. Uh, right. You know, I, I got someone right now that's on, PTO for a whole week. And today is Juneteenth and it's an official company holiday. Even though she requested PTO for today, we're not going to give her PTO. We're going to give her the holiday, you know, that right. sort of thing. Sometimes people like, but can I have double that day? Um, so I guess you could do whatever you want, whatever the policy will allow. What do you, what do you think? What, what yeah, I mean, that was my answer too. And, 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 and what she said, the added part of this was, I'm like, well, just don't let them in the building, right? Just lock them out. So you can't, you can't work today. We're all taking this on a holiday. You can't work. Um, yeah. But they're all remote workers, so they can work whenever they want, right? And so um, I, 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 I would, I, I think it's policy based, right? You have to go back and say what is your policy base. So I worked at a QVC, as I've said numerous times on here, and. So we worked 24 seven, right? We had people working all the time except for Christmas day. And, you know, so a lot of us worked holidays. It was just normal. And so you would take that holiday and they would get that day. They would take another day off that week. Um, and, but we had that in our policy. And so again, I think creating that policy is the really important part because you want to be consistent. You want to make sure that you're doing that across the board. Now, if you don't have a policy about it, um, I think it's time, right? You would build a policy oh. around like, hey, if you're going to have to work one of our holidays, uh, please let us know seven days in advance. We will then give you another day off. That's not going to, that, you know, approval of your manager. So it doesn't impact the company, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so all that stuff in there, I think is really important to kind of do that. Again, I think policy, I, I think a lot of times, you know, you and I talk about this, Chuck, all the time, right? Um, you put things in your employee handbook that are based on federal, state, and local law, but you also put in things in there and based on company culture and company expectations. And I think this one would be the company expectations. You would define what that is. If you have to work on a holiday, here's what we're going to do for you. And so yeah. that way everyone knows. And and we do that now, you know, just uh, with, you know, today I worked, uh, but I can take, I'm gonna take my holiday because uh, we're a seven day a week operation. Um, I'll take my holiday later uh, in a couple of weeks. So we do allow that. You know, it's interesting though, John, when you were telling the story, I kept thinking about uh, one uh, resort hotel I worked with uh, and they had, um, they would on holidays, there was an employee, she was in sales and marketing. So on holidays like Christmas, like New Year's, like anytime the the accounting department would close, sales and marketing would close, everyone would take the day off. Well, she's a Jehovah, I think, I think it was Jehovah Witness. She says, I don't celebrate holidays. I can't take the day off. And I'm like, well, we're not so much celebrating it where uh, um, the office is closed. She said, well, it says right here in the policy in order for oh. you to celebrate, yes. Celebrate the holiday, wow. the offices will be wow. closed. I'm like, okay, you got me. So she was a coordinator and we allowed her 
to work. And I remember getting a little bit of like, well, what could she do? The office is closed. Everyone is closed. There's no work for her. I'm like, guess what? You could figure out stuff for a marketing coordinator to do, right? She, we still had the internet back then. It wasn't that long ago. You know, you could, <laughs> she could file, she could, you know, there's things that that person could do. And it worked out, it worked out great. So there you go. That, that is, Language. I was thinking about that. Yeah. Language, right? You got to be careful your language, how you put things yeah. in there. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I really love that. Uh, they like telling that story. So that yeah. these are great, great. Three great questions. Good discussion. Um, any closing thoughts for us today? Um, I, my one closing thought is we love getting your questions. So email us at email at team at HR stories with your quest.com with your questions. Um, we will do our best to answer them in private and we can have a conversation about them. With your permission, we'll put them on air um, so people can learn uh, from your questions because I can guarantee you, and we talk about this in our workshops a lot, that if you one person has the question, 100 people have that question. Um, and so definitely ask it. Uh, don't feel like it's a, a crazy question. We want to help you. We want to make sure that you have the answers you need to be that successful HR leader, manager, um, employee for that matter. Yep. Absolutely. All right, folks. Thank you. You've been listening to the HR stories podcast question and answer edition. Make sure you check us out every week for a new story, uh, which will be next week will be a brand new full broadcast story that we break down and look into. And once again, HR stories podcast, where there's a lesson in every story. Thank you for listening to the HR Stories podcast. The material presented in this podcast is for informational purposes only. Chuck and John always recommend using an employment lawyer or HR consultant to handle any legal concerns or HR issues. We do our best to double check sources and make sure the information we are providing is accurate. We may eliminate or embellish without changing the basic narrative to make the story easier to understand. In certain circumstances, we may change identifying information to protect the innocent. The HR Stories broadcast is brought to you by the team at HR Stories. The team at HR Stories is designed to help anyone with HR responsibilities be better at managing the employee experience. To engage with us, go to the hrstoriesteam.com and learn more about how the team at HR Stories can support your business or nonprofit. Thank you for listening to the HR Stories podcast, where there is a lesson in every story.